Hey everyone, this is YouTube Media, and in this video, I'm going to be showing you a quick overview and basic tutorial on the new TechSmith Camtasia Studio 8. It is the successor to Studio 7 and is the newest version as of 2012. So let's go ahead and get started. Now, in the bottom, you can see the difference in the icons. This is 7 on the left, and this is the new icon of Studio 8 on the right. Also, they changed the appearance of the icons for the project files right here. Let me go ahead and open up 7 first. So take a look at 7. It's almost identical to 8. So this is 7, and this is 8. 7, 8. So you can see almost everything on the top half is identical. It's really the change on the bottom half in the timeline. They've changed that and added some new features. So... Let me go ahead and get started. Uh, go ahead and click Import Media to import your file, or just right-click and click Import Media. And I'm going to find my project file right here. This is just some random example video I have. Click, hold, and drag it down to the track line. It's going to ask you to pick dimensions. Go ahead and pick recording dimensions. You should be doing it as recording unless you have some other reason for it. Uh, background color, go ahead and pick white. I'm going to show you why, because this allows you to do some cool visual property adjustments, which I'll get to. So go ahead and pick white and recording dimensions, click OK. Now, one of the major differences, as with the timeline, is you can see over here it says track 1, track 2. In Camtasia Studio 7, it was video 1 and audio 1. They don't label it by video and audio and separate it like that. It's just track 1, track 2. Now, if you want to separate the video and audio into two separate tracks, simply highlight it, right-click it, click Separate Video and Audio, and then it separates it into two separate tracks. You can also add more tracks by pressing the plus button. Add another track, another track to add more video or audio. And then you can right click it and uh, delete if you don't want it. So you can see the audio is combined with the video right here on track two. This second audio clip is my computer audio. This is a screen recording. So one is from my microphone, my voice, and the one down here is my uh, screen recording. So I'm going to go ahead and delete this. I don't actually want that. Now another really big improvement they've made on version 8 that has already made it three times easier for me to edit is highlighting and selecting in the timeline. You can literally highlight and select anything you want, including the callouts to move it around. This comes in really handy when you have the video and audio separated um, from a track and on two separate tracks. So for instance, in Camtasia Studio 7, if I have the audio and video disconnected like I do right now, if I move it, see the audio doesn't follow, so I have to manually move it. Along with this uh, second audio, it doesn't follow, so I have to manually move them all. You also can't highlight in 7, making it a lot more time consuming to edit, especially when the video and audio is separated. But, but in 8, I can go ahead and highlight anything I want, drag it, move it. Now let's say I only want the top and bottom tracks. Hold down the control, click the middle one, and it's deselected. So now you're moving just these two. You can even include callouts on it, and you can push everything together. So like let's say I delete this track, you have this big gap in here. I just highlight everything and drag it right over, literally two seconds. Whereas in 7 it would be a lot more time consuming. So that's a major improvement. So a major feature they added to this is grouping. So basically um, what you can do, instead of adding a bunch of tracks to add multiple callouts, for instance, uh, let's say I go to callouts, I want to add a square, and then I want to also add um, another one with, and make it a circle. And you see how they keep getting stacked up and more and more. If you want to put them together because they're in the same spot of the video, simply highlight them. Okay, hold your mouse and highlight both of them. I'm going to move it here. So have them both highlight it, right click and click group. It now groups them onto one track and they're still both there. To edit them and separate them, you can press this plus button. It expands it and you can manually uh, edit them. Up here you can go into the fade in, fade out, change that. And then we can also drag it. Uh, you can drag this little line right here and change the length of them, etc. And then minus them. If you want to ungroup them, just de just collapse them again and then right click and click ungroup and it now separates them again. So that's really cool. The grouping feature prevents you from having to add a bunch of extra tracks. Now you also notice down here uh, this little scroll bar allows you to expand the vertical width of the track so you can see you can better see like the audio graphing here and stuff like that. I really like that. That comes in handy. Then you have the regular zoom bar right here. You can zoom in and out like that. So I'm going to go ahead and delete these two callouts, just highlight and delete them. Another thing they added is quizzes, uh, quizzing. You can click right here on quizzes or quizzing and then click add quiz. You can see the quiz right here and you can move it around to where you want in the video. So I'm just going to put it right here. The other thing I wanted to show you is remember how I told you to pick the background color as white? This is why I want to show you. So we go to more and we go to visual properties. So we need to have this highlighted, as I said. So then it allows you to change the visual properties. I'm going to add an animation. Uh, right here. Now what this allows you to do, check out the preview window here on the right. So 
I'm going to change the scale. You can change the scale of the entire video. So I'm going to put it at 74%. Change the opacity if you want it to be dimmed out. I'm going to leave it at 100. You can rotate it and everything like that. But here's what's cool. We can add a drop shadow. Adjust uh, this. So I'm going to put it. I'm going to put it out like that. I'm going to put the direction on the left here, like that. Add a blur. You can even put a border if you want for some reason. Put red. And you see how it uh, puts the red border around it. I'm going to uncheck that though. Now, why would you want to do this? Well, um, it comes in handy. Like, let's say, for example, I wanted to. Um, so here's the normal video, and then bam, the visual uh, properties adjustment. We can do a zoom and pan. This would be cool for zooms. So you see, when I zoom in on a small area of the video, it, it shows the entire video clip being moved off the screen and it gives it a shadow and everything so this looks kind of cool. Now two more quick things I want to show you before we uh, pretty much have covered uh, all the basics is they had a huge library for free that is included. You have all this uh, music you can use as like background music. They have that uh, background. Let's try this one. So they have different uh, music you can pick from. Also they have animated themes. Let's say I want this one. It's it's actually moving too. So we're going to click and drag it down here. Um, so you can see it's, it's 1280 by 720. My screen is much bigger than that so I would have to uh, manually stretch it. But if you have a 1280 by 720 it'll look perfect. So let's go ahead and play it. And you're going to see how it's moving. See how it's moving. So these are animated themes that are really cool to add like at the end or beginning of videos. To edit the text once again, these are grouped, so you're going to press the plus button to expand it, double click this, and edit your text, YouTube, media. So I'm going to go ahead and delete this and get on to the last thing, which is speech to text. This is a pretty cool feature. You can basically do manual captions like this and add it, so you see how it adds the captions there. You can also do manual automatic speech to text, so we can right click the video and click uh, apply speech to text this is going to take a second you can go through and train your computer to understand your voice which I recommend so it gets more accuracy I'm just going to skip this for now it's going to take a minute so you can see once it's done it puts all the automatically generated uh, subtitle speech to text captions above here on track 5 here now you can see some of them are not right I didn't say rises 1 a.m. but uh, that's again because I didn't um, train my microphone and this is also really bad audio this is just an example but you can manually change it so anyway so since it's not correct we just double click on this section, it brings it up right here and you can correct it with what you did say. Zebra eats Cheetos or something. Uh, whatever you actually did say. Now to actually produce the video, just go up to the produce and share button, click it. When this pops up, click this drop down list. Now if you're making a video with interactive features like live hyperlinks or quizzes, you need to use this format with video player. This is of course sending it like over a device or website, not on YouTube, that wouldn't work. But you need the with video player format for interactive features. Otherwise go down to add edit preset. This pops up, click new, name your preset. So I'm going to do um, preset 7. Then click the format. I do MOV, it's the highest quality, but it takes a long time, so you could also try MP4 or WMV. So MOV, click next. Then you can also go to QuickTime options and change the video audio settings. Uh, click next again. Dimensions should be your recording dimensions, or you can change it manually if for some reason you want something else. Watermark, this is a popular feature, so to include a watermark, check the box then click options. This pops up. It gives you a little preview of the default watermark. To change this, you click this file icon. Go ahead and find the image you want to use as a watermark, so I'll just double click this. Now you can go ahead and position it around by using these squares or manually position it with the horizontal and vertical offset buttons. You can also change the image scale. Use this. Change the size and the opacity. You make it 100% there or dim it down to like 20 or 30%, which is usually what I do. Go ahead and click OK finish and close and you now have your preset down here preset 7 the one we just made so I can produce my videos from now on with this preset if you ever want to change it you can go back to add edit preset and change all the settings but then you just click next give the uh, final product video video a name and then just click finish and it will render your video so there you have it, a quick overview and basic tutorial of Camtasia Studio 8. I know it was kind of a long video, but I was trying to go through it as fast as I can. So all the links will be in the description below, and thank you for watching.